डिस्ट्रिक्ट लातूर ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बल्दे कोर सीरीज टू टुडे देयर इज 221st डे ऑफ द लॉन्ग सीरीज एंड द कीनोट स्पीकर फॉर टुडे सेशन कुटन डायस एडवोकेट नीलिमा देश पांडे मैडम सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वेलकम टू यू मैडम फॉर दिस प्लेटफार्म आई वेलकम द चीफ ऑर्गेनाइजर ऑफ द सीरीज ऑनरेबल प्रिंसिपल एम एम बेटकर सर I welcome the faculties from my college, Dr. Sanjay Kale sir, Dr. Anita Dole madam, Honorable Pramin Utge sir, and heartily welcome all those dear participants. The topic for today's presentation is gender equality and women's law in India. Now this topic is going to present, as I have mentioned, Advocate Nilima Deshpande madam. Now let me focus upon her qualification. She is MBA, LLM, CCFS, and MJ. Also, cyber laws from freelance legal consultant at Pune. So, with this brief introduction, now I request to you, Madam, please start your presentation on the topic gender equality and women's law in India. Please welcome, Madam. Thank you. uh i first of all uh, thanks sri kumar swami mahavidyalaya avsa latur for this opportunity given to me sir uh, dr betkar sir prashant sir and all the other faculty members and i welcome all the participants to this topic which is very close to my heart and uh, i carry this mission to uh, empower women uh, by uh, dissemination of the rights which they should know and they should be aware of so this thought came to me when uh, it's a small story behind it so when i had joined my employment uh, way back in 20 25 years back and uh, at that time if i had known the laws which uh, existed for women uh things would have been very different in my personal life where i had uh, not been very uh, aware of the maternity benefits which were there and i had to go through an abortion because i had joined job and then i thought my job i need to retain my job and uh, i was not really uh, i had not read about the maternity benefits which i could have availed and continued in the job instead of resigning the job or instead of doing uh, abortion so this journey started from that time that i wanted to be aware of the rights and gradually i have come to this place now so i would like to share a presentation which i have prepared yes i hope the screen is visible to all yes madam yeah. yes 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 so to start with uh, the session i would first like to have a small poll uh, just it is not that you need to answer but think about it on your own even if you think about it on your own that is fine if you answer that is fine so this is a small poll which i would like to uh, ask each one of you do you think the topic of women's laws and gender equality is essential today after 76 years of india's independence this is a question to each one of you just to reflect whether it is a need even now we need it or we can do away with it whatever is your views on this Yes, 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 madam. Yes, yes, we need it, madam. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for your response. So I had this question when, uh, when I thought that there is equality everywhere at my home, when my parents treated my brother and me equally. uh i never thought that uh, gender equality is not there or uh, when i see around in the families we interact with and men and women interacting with each other working together so i never uh, really thought there is a need and more so i felt that why do we celebrate women's day 
only one day in a year and so much of attention is given to a woman and is that really making any difference in the lives of women all these questions i used to ask myself try to find answers and gradually this search in me to seek answers intensified so uh, there is one more question which i want to ask you do you believe men and women have equal opportunities in your society no 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 so do you believe there is inequality right yes yes thank you yes ma'am yes so with this question we will be exploring the journey uh, around the world global journey and also the journey in india so i want to take you stay with this question so that we find the answers together through some stories through some through some statistics which i have collected from the united nations and also the supreme court judgments which i will be sharing with you so this is a journey we will uh, do together a uh, little bit of uh, interesting real life stories and real life statistics so let's begin yeah okay yeah so uh, this is uh, these are the questions why women need laws and what is the state of gender equality worldwide so let's begin with the worldwide scenario first and understand what is happening in the field of gender equality so these are the statistics which i have collected no country has achieved gender equality till today this is the actual status which the world's women 2020 these are the trends and statistics published by the united nations so let us understand what these statistics talk about women in the power and decision making area so this is like the positions of power which women are into so women hold only 28% of managerial positions globally so that is all the, these are all the statistics of uh, global worldwide so this this status remains the same since 1995 if you observe the time duration it is such a long time more than 20 years 24 years but we have not improved regarding the women reaching managerial positions then among the fortune 500 corporations only 7.4% are the chief executive officers this is what is the statistics in front of us what about the cabinet ministers women representation in cabinet ministry yet remains well below parity at 22% and in india also you know we are trying to work for the reservation and how things are happening at this stage even now then in education let us see what's happening in education women are a very small minority in scientific research and development making up less than a third of the world's researchers and to add to it stem that is the science technology engineering and mathematics these subjects which are related to research and other things the contribution of female students it is so small it is near 3% or so in these uh, fields in higher education again worldwide the Uh, domestic violence or partner violence it is called uh, worldwide 35% women between this age group of 15 to 50 years have experienced physical or sexual intimate partner violence or non partner sexual violence so these are all the statistics and then there is so much of uh, disparity in the unpaid domestic and care work which almost 60 to 70% of it is done by the women the women only and these are all worldwide statistics more on to that if we go with the current rate at this current rate how much time are we going to take to end child marriage in the world it is going to be 300 years more then to close gaps in legal protection and remove discriminatory laws which exist 
those we are going to come at uh, we are going to look at those uh, i have shortlisted a few of them so 286 years that is almost again 300 years so 140 years to achieve equal representation in leadership in the workplace so these are all the statistics which i wanted to bring to light to all the people who have joined here because it is really that we go and uh, so deep and understand what it is so these subjects we read somewhere but we don't go so deep trying to understand what is uh, the gender equality paradigm so in uh, one in five young women are married before their 18th birthday and this remains a fact even now uh, in our country as well nearly half of married women lack decision making power over their own sexual and reproductive health and the rights this is such a pathetic situation that women don't have right over their own bodies this is also a, a, a concern area then the world is not on track to achieve gender equality by 2030 so why are we talking about 2030 because that is the closest decade and the united nations had worked on some sustainable development goals which i'll be talking about and in that they had uh, prepared a map for 15 uh, for 17 goals in 15 years so that also i'll take you through so here it says that it will take around 140 years to achieve equal representation in leadership in the workplace and women only hold 28% of managerial positions worldwide so talking about the sustainable development goals in the year 2015 the united nations member states which are 193 nations they adopted that 17 goals for the people and for our planet this was their goals uh, which they had declared as part of the 2030 agenda and in these these are the 17 goals so these 17 goals talk about no poverty in the first place then no hunger zero hunger then good health and well being for all then quality education and fifth is gender equality a topic which we will be uh, dwelling more into and there are so many other goals which are again uh, regarding reducing inequalities then industry innovation decent work and economic growth then various other climate action water work and land work and many other things sanitation and others but the primary goal here which i will be concentrating on is gender equality which is the fifth goal so here the focus for this decade after uh, uh, from 15 years now we moved on to a decade so 10 years time frame they had thought where are we and taken an assessment and they brought these three crucial points in the fora saying eradicating poverty remains first then second remains the women and girls and third the climate emergency so these are the sustainable development goals and the focus on women and girls then uh, the united nations called on all sectors of society so we all are part of the society to mobilize for a decade of action what kind of action so action at three levels what are those three levels one is the global action so the countries nations all these 193 nation members they all meet and the heads decide on certain goals then the local action local action at policy level which the governments will bring out frameworks and the laws which they will enforce enact and enforce of course then the third level which we all today are connected with and i want you all to take back i mean a take away from my session should be this that people action people action how we can uh, contribute our bit in people action i will be ending my session so stay tuned for people action and what is your role in this contribution from your side in the sustainable development goals so this is global action local action and talking about the people action so this uh, awareness session which i am taking is also part of the people action and each one of you will have some take away from this session definitely i promise you that 
so this is again the indian scenario average wage earning received per day by casual laborers in work other than public work so see these are all published statistics now from the worldwide we have come to indian scenario to understand how we fare in the gender equality paradigm so these are all the rural and urban male and female statistics of wage earning so if you see the discrepancy how male are earning and females are earning so the rate of wages which is given per day then the other graph talks about activities paid activities and unpaid activities so here if you see the paid activities people earning uh, doing the paid activities the graph which shows the highest is for males and for unpaid activities it is the females so this is the gender parity gender equality what we have in our country currently so all these are statistics uh, from uh, published statistics which i have taken so after this now i want you to uh, i want to take you through certain stories which will help us uh, realize how we have progressed as a nation so this is a story of cb muttamma this is uh, a story of india's first women officer so what is her story and why have i included it here today so this this story starts when muttaba cleared her upsc exam and she was interviewed for the indian civil services what happened at that time is very interesting she chose ifs in the ministry of external affairs but the chairman of the upsc dissuaded her from joining ifs so uh, reasons very well known she was persuaded not to join the ifs the foreign services basically ifs is the foreign services so in the ministry of external affairs but she uh, did not budge and she said no she was the topper okay she was the topper in the ups list that year and uh, she said no i am going to join the IF ifs only so she joined in spite of the chairman not uh, persuading her not to join so she continued after she joined she was denied lot of promotions for several years she saw that all other colleagues of hers the male colleagues were getting promoted to a level where they were getting promoted finally it came to a level where she was denied promotion to the secretary position which is the uh, i mean a good position a senior level position in the ministry and she was denied this and then at that time she raised her voice against the discrimination when she read the, when she raised this voice what happened she uh, she had to go through lot of uh, difficulties which were already there and then uh, the case went up to supreme court where the supreme court gave the guidelines and uh, the service rules had to be changed so what were the service rules she pointed out there was discrimination in promotions that was okay but what was the service rules the service rules the women had to make an undertaking that if they get married they have to take permission and then if they are asked to resign from the job after marriage they should resign so this is an undertaking which is not there for the men but it is only there for the women so women had to give a undertaking and the permission from the government first of all to marry and if the government feels that her marital duties were coming in between her work she has to resign this is an undertaking which is so discriminatory can we believe that this kind of undertakings were being taken from our very own governments so this same condition was not present for male officers as we all know that is why we are talking about discrimination so what happened then was the uh, ministry came to court and they said okay now 6 months back she was not deserving the promotion so we did not give her but 
Now she is eligible for the promotion, and we are giving her the promotion. So invariably, how it works in laws is that the case was filed for promotion. She was given the promotion, so definitely she has to now withdraw the case. So there was Justice Ayer at that time who said that although we dismiss the petition, not dismiss the problem. This is what Justice Ayer had said. A famous judge, Justice Krishna Ayer, who said this about this uh, case. Now, after the government, I have shortlisted for the audience uh, cases from the government, and then from also the uh, private sector and also public sector. So, let us see the next story. Who is the story about? So, this is about our own very uh, famous company we know Air India. So again Air India versus this is Nargesh Pirza, the case name. So what happened here in this case? So Air India had these rules, very interesting rules. Let us know, let us see what those rules are. An air hostess serving Air India was removed from service due to her pregnancy. Isn't it very interesting? So you're pregnant, you will be removed. Then there were rules. What were the rules? The rules said you will retire upon reaching 35 years of age because uh, you lose your charm. After 35 years, a woman loses her charm and then she is not really uh, uh, carrying herself so well that she can be an air hostess. So again, there was another rule which said upon getting married or upon first pregnancy. So these were the rules and women had joined with these rules. So there was so much of discrimination here and many women went to the court. Not only one, there were so many petitions filed and finally they had to modify the rules and uh, they brought changes in the service rules. Next, we move on to another interesting company which is LIC. So I know, uh, I, uh, I'm sure each one of us definitely has one LIC policy at least. So this is story of Neera Mathur. Neera Mathur versus Life Insurance Corporation of India. So what happened in the case of Neera Mathur? It is again very interesting. Wherein Neera had applied for a job in LIC. She cleared the written tests and interviews. And during the initial formalities, she had to sign certain forms. What were those forms? Those forms had questions related to when was her last monthly period. That was the question regarding your month, menstrual cycle, then the pregnancies and other personal details. And why do you think uh, these details are collected? Is there any, uh, I mean, thought behind this? So there is a thought behind this. And the thought is that if you have missed your pregnancy before joining, your form indicates something like that, then definitely it is a risk to hire a woman who has missed her pregnancy because she might be pregnant and then maternity benefits will have to be given to that lady. So these are all the discriminatory practices indirectly done to avoid financial burden of giving maternity benefits. So this, uh, this case went up to Supreme Court and then things changed for the all the women. In fact, the LIC had to change, modify the service rules. So we are all talking about service rules here, which I wanted to highlight basically through this uh, session. Then we move on to the private companies, how are uh, private companies preparing? So this is story of Audrey de Costa. And, uh, this is against a company called Mackinon McKenzie. So Audrey was an employee of that company called Mackinon McKenzie. She worked as a confidential lady stenographer in the company. She worked for many years. 
and she was a very good resource a very trusted resource and when her employment ended she realized that she was paid significantly less than her male colleagues for the same amount of work and time duration whatever she has put in so this realization came to her after the employment ended and when she discussed about her salary because when you are in employment definitely you have confidentiality agreements and you are not supposed to talk about how much you are paid and all these are there are restrictions of course so after her retirement she got to know that her male colleagues were getting a lot more amount in remuneration so audrey mustered the courage to take this discrimination to courts and she finally won the case and uh, this is through the equal payment so we have laws which talk about equal remuneration so you must be aware that lot of film stars uh women film stars come out in our country also saying how much there is a pay gap the film stars the men are getting uh, heroes are getting more than the heroines so we all know about the disparity discrimination there also so after this we have an interesting story about charu khurana so this is charu she is a very famous uh, artist a makeup artist and this is a very recent uh, case where there was discrimination with charu she had trained in makeup from the hollywood so she was a hollywood trained makeup artist and also a hair stylist so what did she do she came to india and she applied for she was an indian she is an indian she applied for membership in the cine costume makeup artist and hair dressers association so what did she want she wanted a membership as a makeup artist and also a hair stylist so what the reply was given to her was she uh, her application was rejected rejected and the reason was the makeup artist job is limited to men only she could apply as a hair dresser but not as a makeup artist so this was again a discrimination meted out to a woman and that to uh, in recent times very recent times so she had no choice left but to fight it out going to the courts and then getting a judgment in her favor wherein they had to budge and allow her as the makeup artist along with the hair stylist so we have been seeing the journey from 1948 1950s after independence from muttama to now the latest and the last story which i have brought for you all which you all are aware of is gender equality in the army so there is a famous uh, case called babita punia she is an advocate who filed a petition a public interest litigation and uh, that was for female officers to be recruited through the ssc in the army so this decision has come in 2020 so uh, i uh, i think most of us are aware uh, because it it came uh, in lot of uh, newspapers and everywhere it was highlighted by the media and all so babita punia she was an advocate who filed this pil and got permanent commission for female officers then did it uh, did it change everything in the army since there was permanent commission for female officers we would think that okay abhi army mein bhi sabhi ko job milne laga women ko especially no in spite of this Uh, supreme court guidelines to take female officer and uh, give them permanent commission things did not change automatically the service rules were not amended see the audacity of the governments whichever the governments so uh, again advocate kush kalra had to file a plea seeking directions that allow women to write the india exams unless the women write the nda exams their entry to the permanent commission again is not fully available because the nda allows only men or the boys so admission to nda is limited to only boys then how will the women get this route through this route and also the naval academy exams 
So again in 2021, so you can see the journey of women laws, how things have been proceeding from independence to till date, where for every discrepancy which is identified, you need to raise your voice and bring those service rules or whatever the entry rules to uh, a level where you are able to join those. So the struggle continues. There is There was gender discrimination in recruitment as well as the service rules in the armed forces, which was removed finally by the SC's decision. So in this, again, the uh, one of the justices, Justice Call asked, why is co-education a problem to the armed forces? And this question was posed because NDA was allowing only male cadets. There was, uh, I mean, NDA was allowing only male cadets till now. So this is the journey uh, of women's struggle to achieve gender equality. So these are few stories and these are real stories which have come to light and uh, I wanted to bring those to a larger audience to make them aware. So now what? This is why we have the constitutional provisions. Lot of constitutional provisions prohibit discrimination against any citizen on the grounds of religion, race, caste, sex, etc. Then we have equal pay for equal work for both men and women. Then Article 42 talks about to state to make provision for ensuring just and humane conditions of work and maternity relief. These are all the provisions, constitutional provisions. Then we have women specific legislation and also women related legislation. So women specific because uh, there are laws which are related to only women like the protection of women from domestic violence act. So here a male person cannot file a complaint. Then we have Dowry Protection Prohibition Act. Then the Indecent Representation of Women Prohibition Act. Then Immoral Traffic Prevention Act. There are so many. I have just uh, given a glimpse of this. So there are uh, a number, huge number of laws which are there. Even women related legislation, there is a list of 45, 50 or more than that laws because those laws where we have certain clauses which talk about the benefits for women. So here we have Factories Act, the Workmen's Compensation Act, then the Minimum Wages Act, then we have Equal Remuneration Act and Legal Services Authorities Act. So these are not, this is not a, uh, I mean, uh, exhaustive list. It's just a few glimpses which I wanted to give to you all. So let us just see what are all the acts. The Equal Remuneration Act, which prohibits discrimination of women workers in recruitment, promotions, training, and other employment conditions. So the act is in place. Are we aware of this? And even if we are aware, do we raise our voice? That is, again, a reflection which we need to do. Then the very famous sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention, prohibition and redressal act. Although the name of the act, the title is so big, it is commonly known as the Posh Act. So all the people working in uh, companies or even uh, at uh, uh, educational institutes, every place it has been mandated by the Supreme Court guidelines. It was given and then this act came after the Nirbhaya case. Before that, there was... Bhavri Devi's case, which was called as the Vishakha guidelines, things uh, did not change much even after Vishakha guidelines and then the uh, Nirbhaya case, which made the legislature to enact these laws. So this uh, um, Posh Act has been made mandate that employees uh, are supposed to be aware of. So employers, there is a mandate that employers make their employees aware. So this act is basically for prevention of sexual harassment and an employer is required to set up an internal committee to receive and redress those complaints which are filed. And also it is a mandate for the employers to provide training on this subject to the employees and also to list those uh, committee members details at prominent places in display boards, and making things available for the women. So 
this is again the posh act and then we have which is going to come very soon i hope that we have the code on social security we are waiting for that to be enacted the notification which is not yet effective which includes the maternity benefits uh, act also women employees to get 26 weeks of paid maternity leave then we have the factories act which mandates that health safety and welfare measures for women employees to be taken care of what kind of measures so the measures include separate washrooms changing rooms lockers for women special security and various other protocols it reminds me of uh, an incident from my personal life wherein i had to raise a voice against uh, i mean for the for the washroom which we wanted so i was working in a company which also had a i mean it was a factory place in chinchwad where i was working and uh, we were very few women less than 10 women and it was a huge factory with lot of men working around and we had the corporate office also there the women uh, all of us had to pass through to a section a department at that time it was called the edp electronic data processing so uh, the it department which we call now in these kind of setups manufacturing organization it was so we had to pass through a department to reach our washroom toilets and uh, it was so awkward that the tables of the employees in that department were uh, lined up and uh, there was Uh, a passage from where in front of them only we had to pass it was so awkward sometimes when we had to go multiple times in a day two or three more than two or three times and those uh, employees there uh, we used to feel that they are counting like are ye to subah hi aayi thi abhi bhi aa rahi hai ek ghante pehle hi to aayi thi fir se aa rahi hai what is this so it was so embarrassing and not really comfortable during our menstrual cycle and uh, certain other periods also when we were not well so i had put a request to the administration department saying please do something about this so we don't want to have this embarrassment of going through so many people around but it was not being considered at all finally i had to uh, write to the managing director of the company i wrote a letter and uh, explain to him what we are going through and then things change for us the washroom was shifted so this is like individual level every person has to raise their voice bring out the problems because the men around will not know what we are facing because why will they think that we are feeling embarrassed or whatever it is so this is just one example which i wanted to share about having a washroom for women so again so many other provisions are needed then we have the companies act now the companies act mandates that at least one woman director should be there on the board this is such a welcome uh, provision because this will ensure that when women are represented at the highest levels of decision making at least women will think about more women and bring out certain needed changes which are needed at every place so this is again a welcome uh, provision then we have other rights of women so i was talking about all the workplace related things uh, i just have included two uh, sections from these acts wherein we have ended the discrimination of daughters from getting the rights over ancestral property so this is through the hindu succession amendment act and then we have as women we have a right to free legal aid through the legal services authorities act so women who cannot afford the fees of a lawyer for those people we also have the provision of a free legal aid of course the difference is you all know yeah, government or a hospital and a private hospital so do you see a government doctor or do you visit a government hospital when you are uh, ill so that is a call we have to take we take but then definitely there is a possibility that if a woman needs free legal aid it is also available through the laws so after this uh, journey of laws which we have i want to talk about 
the people action thing which uh, is close to my heart so only laws do not give equal opportunities to women 143 out of 195 countries have made several laws laws are there now guaranteeing equality between women and men but is it happening in reality and how can that be accelerated by each one of us here that is what is uh, my an uh, aim to disseminate information to every home and uh, this can be done through again coming back to the questions which i asked in the beginning and the action which we as the people need to take so the global action they are taking local action somebody is taking so what me and you as part of this uh, i mean on the planet as part of our action on this planet what can we do so what can we do is let's take a pledge that we eradicate the gender roles which we have instilled in us through lot of unconscious bias so what does this picture mean to you would someone like to say something about this ma'am yes anyone else would like to talk on the image on the picture yes the boy is playing with the dolls and the girl is playing with the vehicle that yes. is totally opposite what is practice means what is seen in our society yes so Actually, what do we do unconsciously sorry yes ma'am yes. ma i saw an ad advertisement over this picture exactly and uh, it highlighted that when we are raising a child we start biasing themselves as a girl and a boy and this was the exact theme of that advertisement that why sh- why don't boys can't play with girl uh, dolls and why can't girls have a uh, interest in driving and uh, heavy loaded work so we have to start raising our boys like that that no work is lesser and no work is only yes. reserved yes. to kitchen uh, for women only or specific for women role so mm-hmm. i don't uh, remember what uh, was the uh who was the organizer of the ad or what was the, what was his name but uh, it was repeatedly being shown on uh, i think youtube yeah. so it was, it had exactly the same and this is in really happening that nowadays we can see that more of the chefs or more of the cooks are there in our houses as boys even the mothers who have only uh, two boys or three boys she raises them up teaching them up how to cook food for themselves as we can see that the students and the people working and staying in hostels have to be independent so they cook very nice food for themselves so now a days our society is realizing that we have to promote both our uh, children both girls and boys for the similar duties and we shall not bias and we have to start it from the families itself if yes. we have to bring the equality in the organization then we have to start it with the family itself and in urban areas like delhi we can see that delhi and ncr and noida where uh, and gurgaon also so now as uh, the roles have been given to both uh, males and females but in urban area it still persists they are still following the stereotypes of raising a ch- uh, child as a girl and raising a child as a boy so yes. this image exactly reminds me of that and uh, i don't even know which brand it was and uh, what was it talking on but i have seen that ad very frequently yes. so we so here uh, what i would like to add on is it is not only about i mean the image is just uh, to uh, i mean give a brief uh, talk about the conscious and unconscious bias so this is like uh, sometimes we say to the boys when the boy is crying or even a little boy we say you know boys don't cry 
we will tell the boys that boys are not supposed to cry why they aren't they human they don't experience human emotions why should men not cry so this is the unconscious bias which we carry and uh, that is how we are brought up at least the society which we live in most of it more than 50 60% of the families still carry this kind of bias but then uh, the aim of my session is to create this awareness that conscious or unconscious please have this uh, just before you say anything you buy gifts you just be aware of whether you are doing the gender stereotyping so ma'am here if i may add you know uh, i have a niece and a nephew every time whenever i used to go and buy toys in a shop i used to buy a doll for my niece and for my nephew i always used to buy a truck or a revolver something like like that and now i realize that how uh, those biases are so much ingrained into our minds that we don't even realize what we are buying yes very true very true thank you so much malti for uh, i mean uh, this uh, sharing this because uh, this really helps us identify where all are we doing this kind of unconscious training to our boys and also to our girls because uh, even engineering studies as i said the stem it is called engineering studies uh, not many women go for the uh, core engineering related studies even my husband shared with me that in his mechanical engineering batch there was not a single girl and he did not opt for computers at that time because he said muli karta i mean sorry to say this but girls uh, take computers we have to take uh, mechanical engineering only this is what he told me and uh, uh, how things are ingrained so even uh, now we see that we encourage both the children with the same uh, attitude of checking whether what is the interest or aptitude of the child instead of thinking whether the gender plays any role in a, in their education so this is what is the aim if there are any more questions or anything to add on any experiences to share like what others have shared most welcome chetna had shared a wonderful experience thank you for sharing chetna Yeah, right. so, ma'am, I have a, I have an example. Uh, I have a question. Yes, please. Yeah. So, ma'am, uh, you actually mentioned about the laws. Okay. So, let's say the equal pay law and all. Yes. So, while the laws are there in existence, but is the government doing anything to keep our governance on our companies adhering to those laws? Yeah, there are checks, audit checks. Then factory inspector is there, and but then what happens is enforcement. You know how enforcement of laws happens in our country. So mm -hmm. everything, yeah. So there is also one uh, word which we use often saying manage. So manage mm -hmm. is used in several ways. You know. So how you manage? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. So there is management everywhere. So uh, being in this uh, domain, I don't want to say much about it. But then that is okay. why awareness of rights is so important. And if you find something Correct. is not right, you need to raise your voice. Ask. No, if it is, मुझे क्या फर्क पड़ता है? That attitude should not be there. Correct. Got it. Got it, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> True. Yes. so i hope i uh, did just uh, the topic and completed it in time because the subject is so vast and i had to limit it to the perspective which i wanted to bring giving the take away wow Yes, yes, I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes.
ये Thank you, thank you so much. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Uh, good evening. This is Kapil. Yes, please. Uh, ma'am, actually, I am reading this is sustainable development goals to be achieved will be two thousand twenty uh, to thirty. So, what does mean global actions and local actions? What is the yeah. difference? So, global action is the United Nations one ninety three countries which are uh, which are represented. by our heads individually all these countries are meeting in the un general assembly if you go to the website of un if you just google it it's everywhere so the united nations 193 countries all come together with the agenda of improvement and working for the people and for the planet so in 2015 they had come out with this 17 goals so the 17 goals it's not only about gender equality but so many other goals which are there related to the climate then uh, the resources natural resources and so many others so all these goals basically they want every country to participate that is the global level then the local level is what our governments do at their level so in india we have enacted so many laws so environment protection act then the uh, domestic violence act so uh, just to share with you domestic violence is an act which is there in 140 countries not 100% 193 countries so there are 196 countries uh, globally in the world we have 193 are members and three have uh, three other countries like uh, one is the vatican city Uh, and then the other is uh, taiwan and one more so i just forgot the name so these three are not part but all other countries pass the resolutions to bring all the changes which are needed for the people and for the planet also so that is why it is sustainable development goals it is called okay. and uh, yeah so all 17 goals uh, Uh, are important if i may take take you back to the slide which i'll just put up so these are all the goals they talk about various things like peace justice and strong institutions then sustainable cities and communities they also talk about industry innovation and infrastructure they also talk about affordable and clean energy they talk, talk about clean water and sanitation then responsible consumption and production so factories responsible consumption and production is what like uh, un uh, restricted production of vehicles now for example pune city is flooded with cars and uh, the i am i am from pune city so i can tell you the traffic jam congestions and so many other issues which we are facing so uh, i hope uh, those who are from pune can relate to it so sustainable development shall also include providing infrastructure transportation services so that i feel so bad to go to the court in shivajinagar from my own area that i take 40 minutes 45 minutes for a distance of hardly 6 7 kilometers and that too uh, i do not have a proper transport available so i take my car and i am wasting every day i feel the guilt of wasting the seat of four people in my car and i am wasting the resources so these kind of things are also included in those sustainable development goals which each one of the goals if we really work upon individually like using less water instead of uh, putting on the shower how many liters of water do you use for a bath one time bath can you reduce that if you are using 15 liters can you reduce it to 12 to 
all these are the sustainable goals i hope i have been able to clarify what it means okay ma'am thank you yes so one gentleman would like to ask something if you have any query please come ahead hello yes uh, good evening dr bedkar sir principal sir prashant sir and uh, good evening madam wonderful uh, presentation you had given about the gender equality and especially the case studies what you have said uh, really you know uh, that uh, reflects in future also we can take concern of those things uh, i want to ask two important very important questions are one question is uh, regarding the posh act um i think that is our section 498a and under this act you know what are the what is the scope of this act means where it is applicable like for example it is only the physical assault or even a, you know sometimes some comments are passed or sometimes you'll find um some something which is not correct to speak in front of the um, uh, uh, public and people are passing comments in which make, makes uh, the female embarrassed so whether it covers the such a kind of taunting and such a kind of a uh, uh, i get covered under posh act or no very very good question sir although it will take a separate uh, session because uh, i may uh, in fact i would like to give this session also bedkar sir i can uh, offer my services for uh, bringing awareness on posh act also but to clarify dr swanan sir's uh, thing 498 is a separate ipc section and posh act is a separate act so they are not related at all okay 498a comes under the ipc we have posh act for every kind of incident whether the uh, woman is an employee or not and uh, the question which you asked rightly in fact if you uh, in, in covid times we were working online so if a manager or a colleague ask the woman forcibly to switch on her video for a longer duration that than needed a manager asking a female employee to keep the video on while doing interaction for work related meetings and all in fact even that will be constituted as harassment in this act so the scope of posh act is very very wide it's very huge so even a small act can be constituted as sexual harassment depending on the facts and circumstances so it was a very i mean good valid question important question which you asked to bring this awareness as well ma'am uh, one more thing i want to ask in the same regard yeah. uh, if suppose woman wants to you know um, uh, put some uh, this uh, complaint or something like that is there any Uh, app is there so where, where you know whether where she can apply for it and then yes. you know it will be taken a note of yeah. this now that they fire also possible nowadays yes. so yes. like this is there any special room sale for this yeah in fact uh, i now realize that uh, this kind of similar session very recently i had taken for a forum called only hr in pune so there i had included these specific questions also through uh, my presentation wherein i had given them the places to go for complaint for women i removed those for this session because i thought it may not be relevant in this context but now i regret that uh, i have not included that but let me uh, give you the input here we have a website for women and child development also the government's website so if the uh, person who's uh, who, if the lady employee she is facing this kind of issues she can go to the website and anonymously also file this uh, complaint at the she box it is called a she box there is a website where you can go apart from that this uh, woman will be a employee somewhere then they have internal committee if she is not an employee somewhere where there is a committee then she can go to the local committee there are so many women cells around she can reach a police station or the women cell and then file a complaint there so it has been very widely uh, made available to all the women so if in for example if you are traveling through a bus city bus or a state transport bus and there is some misbehavior you can report to the 
bus depot there they will have some provision so everywhere this provision has been made irrespective of whether you are a employee or not anywhere even in a cinema hall if you go and there is some misbehavior you can report it to the uh, manager there so these kind of things have been made available only thing is women need to be made aware of this the awareness is lacking uh thank you ma'am uh, one more question is there with me you know sometimes uh this uh, legislation is used as a weapon from by some fem uh, you know fem females uh, to the male also yeah. and uh, there are allegations and then the things goes on goes on goes on so yeah. is there any kind of a break or any kind of a uh, clause that will pro protect the male also so sir of course there is uh, see uh, the decision when uh, the case is reported the decision does not happen unilaterally it's it's not happening uh, one sided any time so there is always a provision to fight uh, against right so it will never happen one sided investigation proper investigation will be done after which only the judgment will come yes thank you thank you very much ma'am yes my pleasure thank you thank you for all your responses and the participation it was a wonderful okay. session nilima ma'am uh, very informative and uh, so engaging and thank you for all this knowledge that you have shared and i must say that the case studies were really interesting and uh, betkar sir thank you for this platform that we get to know so much about all these topics which we otherwise we don't discuss uh, in our day to day lives thanks a lot thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, somebody was uh, saying something. Anyone wants to? Very much, Dr. Shifra Desai. Thank you yes. so much for inviting for this session. Actually, I didn't know about it, and I had quite a wonderful time. recalling all these laws and case actually it was thank you nice nice session thank you so thank you so much honorable chetna ma'am kapil sir krishna shukla sir sarita ma'am aur ek sushma ma'am you it is and and i also the honorable sir who this is the world record series and the keynote speaker those who joins every day now i move towards the vote of thanks shri kumar swami mahavidyalaya avsa district latur as we know organized world record series to today we have completed 221st day of the series and the topic for today's presentation was very interesting and very significant one that is gender equality and women's laws in india yes now the topic presented by honorable advocate nilima deshpande madam she here and in a very simple page she explained to my gender equality why the equality is important how to improve gender equality then what is the importance of the equality and also uh, given some example uh, brought some examples in front of us different cases 
and different quotes, different acts uh, in front of us through her speech. So I'm very, very thankful to you, Madam, on behalf of the organizing committee members. You have paid your valuable time and expressed your views regarding the topic. Sincerely, thanks once again. I thank the chief organizer of the series, Honorable Principal M. M. Bedkar, sir. I thank the faculty from my college, Dr. Sanjay Kale, sir, Anita Dhole, madam, vocational supervisor, Honorable Pravin Utgya, sir, and others. Once again, I thank all those participants always shared some views and asked nice queries in the discussion session. Chetana ma'am, Malti Pillai madam, Amruta ma'am, Kapil Suryavansh, sir, Dr. Swanil Shikla, sir. We have asked questions, so thanks to you. And I should not forget all our dear participants who join the series regularly, encourages us, and also enhance the beauty of the series. So thanks a lot to you all once again. And I request to you all, please fill the feedback link which is given in the chat box. So the kind permission of the chief organizer of the series, the session is over. Thank you, Deshpandi, madam. Very nice session, very informative uh, speech from your side today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. मैम से आज सर मैं एक बात बोलना चाहूंगा मैम ने आज बहुत अच्छे से एक्सप्लेन करके एक नए विषय के साथ आपने जोड़ा और मुझे एक नई जानकारी मिली मैम नीलिमा मैम का मैं जो प्रेजेंटेशन था मैं काफी देर से देख रहा था तो मैं देख करके मुझे बहुत एक अचंबल लगा कि मैं एक नया चीज मैम से जान रहा हूँ और मैम ने इतने अच्छे से एक्सप्लेन किया उस उन चीजों को कि मैं कहने के लिए कोई शब्द ही नहीं बचता और आज का सेशन सचमुच में एक अद्भुत था क्योंकि नीलिमा मैम ने बहुत अच्छे से एक्सप्लेन करके बताया मैम से चाहेंगे कि आगे भी इस तरह का सेशन एक लॉ से ही संबंधित में अगर ए, मतलब कभी भी कुछ हो तो मैम हम लोगों को अवगत करवाएं क्योंकि हमारा फील्ड पत्रकारिता से संबंधित का है और इस बीच में लॉ की जानकारी अगर होती है तो बहुत सी चीजों के बारे में तो अच्छा लगता है yes. और मैं आगे से मैम अगर अब अवश्य बेदकर सर से चाहेंगे कि इनका एक सेशन कभी और भी अगर मैम से बहुत कुछ जानने के लिए क्योंकि मैम ने जिस तरह का जिस तरह से इन्होंने अपना एक इंटरेस्ट शेयर किया एक अनुभव शेयर किया और एक सचमुच मैम एक नीलिमा मैम एक बाई बात बता दूं बेदकर सर के पास भी बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जिसे आईपीआर से संबंधित उनसे बहुत कुछ जानने को भी मिल जाता है मेरे मैं उनका सेशन हमेशा सुनता हूं और मैं जब भी सुना हूं तो एक मैंने एक चीज देखा है सर का प्रेजेंटेशन पीपीटी भले ही एक हो मगर सर का बताने का जब तरीका होता है तो हर सेशन में कुछ ना कुछ एक नया चीज सर छाप देकर जाते हैं तो मुझे ये चीज सर का बहुत अच्छा लगा और मैम सचमुच में मैं बताऊं मैं पटना बिहार से जुड़ा हुआ था और आज आपके आपका सुन करके भी मुझे अच्छा लगा और सबसे अच्छा ये लगा कि आपने प्रेजेंटेशन को इतनी बारीकी तरीके से आपने समझाया क्योंकि उसमें इतनी सारी चीजें थी कि मैं उसे नोट कर, कर भी नहीं पाता लेकिन अम्बेडकर सर का एक सबसे बड़ा खासियत यह है इस प्लेटफॉर्म का कि उन्होंने लाइव सेशन को चलाया है और ये लाइव सेशन यूट्यूब पर हमेशा अवेलेबल है मैं जब चाहूंगा तो मैं इसे खोल कर कभी भी देख पाऊंगा इसके लिए बहुत बहुत आभार मैं और मैं क्या कहूँ आगे भी सेशन अगर बस हो बेदकर सर तो इनका बस लिया जाए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू थैंक यू Definitely, sir. I look forward to the Posh Act awareness. Definitely, I will do that. Yes. Yeah. So basically, Posh, and then there is one new concept which is called Living Will. So Living Will, जो किसी को अभी तक जानकारी नहीं है, तो उसपे भी मैं एक सेशन लूँगी. So definitely, I will come back with more sessions. जी जी बहुत बहुत सचमुच में मैम वो भी एक आज के आज के समय के लिए बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट जानकारी है मैंने इसीलिए तो कहा मैंने अम्बेडकर सर को कि जिनको आज आपने इतने मतलब इम्पोर्टेंट शख्सियत को आपने बुलाया है कि मैं क्या कहूँ उनका एक अपना एक अनुभव है और मैं तो सचमुच में एक बच्चा हूँ आपसे मैम बहुत कुछ जानने को भी मिलेगा 
और मैंने कहा तो मैं पत्रकारिता का छात्र हूँ तो मुझे एकदम चाहिए और वो चीजें जो आप पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू देते हैं वो जैसे आई से संबंधित मैंने अम्बेडकर सर के बारे में बताया कई जगह पर मैंने उसका इस्तेमाल किया अगर वो अगर मुझे नहीं बताते तो मुझे लगता है कि कई सारे लोग लुटा जाते और इसीलिए मैंने आई के संबंधित जब मैंने सर से नियमावली को जाना तो मैंने कितने लोगों को उसके बारे में बताया और उनके उसके बारे में उन लोगों को समझाया भी तो क्योंकि फ्रॉड आज के समय जो होता है ना फ्रॉड का समय और ये फ्रॉड गिरी को रोकने के लिए अवेयरनेस की आवश्यकता होती है अम्बेडकर सर का जो कार्यक्रम होता है ये अवेयरनेस का कार्यक्रम है और आपने भी जो आज समझाया मैं वो अवेयरनेस का कार्यक्रम है और आपने जो विषय अभी जो बताया वो भी अवेयरनेस का काम है तो आगे चल करके मैं हम लोग को चाहेंगे की मैम आपका ज्यादा से ज्यादा सुने क्योंकि आपके पास बहुत कुछ है बताने के लिए आप नए नए चीजों को लाए और अम्बेडकर सर को बताए तो अम्बेडकर सर के प्लेटफॉर्म के माध्यम से आपको कोशिश करेंगे कि इसमें प्लेटफॉर्म के माध्यम से कुछ नया जन जानकारी मिले क्योंकि लॉ बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी है जानना बहुत सारे लोग हैं जिनको नियम नियम का जानकारी नहीं होता है उन्हें बहुत सारी परेशानियों का सामना करना पड़ता है अगर थोड़ी सी भी जानकारी हो जाती है तो उनके साथ वो सारी चीजों का सामना करना कम हो जाता है इसलिए बहुत अच्छा लगा मैम बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद Thank you. Thank you. सर एक बात है ना कि आज का भी आज का आपका सेशन महत्वपूर्ण था बट मेरे साथ समस्याएं ये हो गई कि मेरा स्टोरेज फुल था और इस वजह से मैं सुबह का कार्यक्रम मिस कर गया और मेरे साथ मोबाइल हैंग की समस्याएं थी और शांति समिति दशहरा को लेकर यहाँ बैठक चल रही थी मैं अभी प्रशांत सर भी जुड़े हुए हैं प्रशांत सर को पता है किधर मैं लगातार न्यूज को लेकर मैं एक्टिव हुआ हूँ बिहार में और लगातार मैं कोशिश में हूँ की मैं अपना भी एक वीडियो अपना जिससे सब लोगों को लोगों ने सुना है मेरा भी लोग सुने अब आने वाले समय में और मैं खुद ही इस चीज को मैं प्रसारित करने के उद्देश्य में हूँ और मैं एक मैंने एक, एक जानकारी देना चाहता हूँ सर आपने जितना सेशन करवाया मैं तो अब तक कोई न्यूज बनाया नहीं कोई कोई न्यूज लगाया नहीं मगर कुछ समय के बाद ये दशहरा खत्म होते ही हम लोग जब वेबसाइट चालू करेंगे तो मैं आपको लिंक अभी तो फिलहाल मैं अपना लिंक प्रोवाइड करवाऊंगा मैंने एक एजेंसी भी तैयार करने का कोशिश किया है न्यूज का डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म पे ताकि जितने भी वेबसाइट वाले हैं मैं उन्हें अगर आपकी स्टोरी ये कार्यक्रम का भेजू तो वो फोटो के साथ अगर वेबसाइट पर लगा देते हैं तो अगर मैं कोशिश करूंगा चार से पांच वेबसाइट न्यूज वाले वेबसाइट पर न्यूज अगर लग जाता है तो ये हम लोग की सार्थकता होगी तो मैं कुछ दे नहीं पा पाऊ भले ही अलग चीजें मगर दूर में रहकर एक सहयोग तो इतना कर सकता हूँ तो मेरी कोशिश यही है सर आगे चलकर ये बेहतर करने का और जन से जुड़ जुड़कर कोई समस्या उठाने का अभी देखिए मंत्रालय मुझे लगातार कोशिश में मुझे बैठक में बुला बुला भी रही है तो मैं कोशिश में रहता हूँ की मैं वहाँ जाकर प्रत्यक्ष रूप से अपना सुझाव भी दू मुझे अच्छा लगता है ये चीज और ये चीज देखिये पॉजिटिव जर्नलिज्म करने के बाद ये संभव हो पाया अगर नेगेटिव में मैं रहता तो मैं कभी कुछ नहीं कर पाता मंत्रालय भी मुझे नहीं जानकारी दे पाती है राजभवन और सीएम मंत्रालय से भी ऑनलाइन जब भी वहाँ बैठक हो रही है तो मुझे बुलाया जाता है तो ये मेरे लिए बहुत बड़ी बात है जबकि मैं अभी किसी चैनल में नहीं हूँ मुझे फ्रीलांसर के तौर पर जोड़ दिया जाता है तो मेरे लिए बहुत बड़ी बात है धन्यवाद सर चेतना मैम भी लगता है कि ये भी रेगुलर 